Fresno State saved the best for last a season ago, reeling off nine straight wins to close the regular season and claim the Mountain West tournament title. The Bulldogs finished the year 25 and 10 overall, 13 and 5 in league play, and are predicted to finish fourth in the league standings this season with three returning starters. Joined on set by Paul Watson, uh, Jerron Hopkins, and head coach of the Bulldogs, Rodney Terry. Um, talking about that late in the season run, going to the, uh, going through the Mountain West tournament, winning this trophy, getting to lift it up and cut the nets and head to the first NCAA tournament for Fresno State since 2001, being in Las Vegas uh, when Jerry Tarkanian uh, coached. Making your mark on this program, what has that done? Well, I think uh, it's brought a lot of, obviously, a lot of excitement to our community, a lot of excitement to the Valley. We like to think that we're the team of the Valley. and. Uh, um, you know, it was a lot of hard work that went into it. You know, um, our guys really uh, were, were really a selfless team by the end of the season a year ago. And, you know, we were able to raise our talent level. I obviously had a chance to, to join the Mountain West Conference that helped us attract the kind of talent that we have right now. Paul Watson being one of those kind of first guys that we got that uh, was a high level guy that we had to compete against bigger schools to get and uh, kind of helped us lay the foundation uh, in terms of how hard we were going to play and how hard we were going to compete night in and night out. And, Helped us land a guy like Jerron Hopkins as well. And, uh, you know, you have to have great players uh, uh, to be successful in the Mountain West Conference. Paul, how exciting um, was that whole experience for you, getting to go through winning a tournament title? That's, you know, that's the goal all season long is to win the conference. And you guys were obviously very competitive in league play. Uh, beat San Diego State twice. That's huge for the program. Um, yeah, it was an unbelievable feeling. Uh, you know, it was something. We worked for all year. Uh, it was the one of the main thing we talked about um, in preseason, you know, workouts, things like that, the spring and the summer, and um, you know that was the goal, and we weren't gonna you know settle for anything but that. Um, no more Marvell Harris, you know, Mountain West Player of the Year. A lot of different people are gonna have to step up. Obviously, no one person can single-handedly fill that void. But um, what do you expect to see out of guys like this and out of your senior leadership? Well, Marvell had a very, very good career for us. I mean, uh, stellar career, uh, to be exact, and uh, was a really good player, not only uh, in our league, but in the country. But uh, uh, we, uh, we, we had a great collection of guys last year that all did, uh, you know, their roles at a very high level for us. And, uh, um, you know, Paul Watson coming back with the experience that he has, Karachi Ido coming back with the experience he has, Cullen Russo as a senior coming back uh, with the experience he has. Jerron's already competed at a very high level. Uh, as well in playing in the Pac-12. Um, you know, we feel like we have a good core of, of experience along with, uh, with some young guys that we can blend in there as well to, uh, to help us compete at a very high level. Those three that you just mentioned, uh, Karachi, Edo, Colin Russo, and Paul Watson, could be one of the strongest front courts in the Mountain West this year. Um, how do you feel about their level of play and how can they be elevated this season? A lot of experience. Those guys have all had really good summers for us as well. And I, again, you know, as much as we can look at this time of year, you know, your seasons are made in the spring and summer, and those guys have worked extremely hard uh, this, this off season, and uh, hopefully we'll have some great carryover with them. They've got great experience. They've had a chance to be in, in, in big games and play significant minutes for us over the course of their careers. And uh, we really expect to see it from their leadership and, and uh, really helping guys that maybe that haven't been in that position as well. Um, Jerron, coming from Colorado, Pac-12 school, having to sit out this past year due to NCAA transfer rules, how excited are you just to get out on the court with this team? Oh, I'm very excited. Uh, I think this team is uh, very unique. We have a lot of versatility, uh, a lot of length, a lot of senior leadership. And if we match those together, we can be able to have uh, a good season and do some of the things that we want to do. Um, you're a very versatile guy, bring a lot to that backcourt. What are a few things that you're looking forward to being able to do and what areas do you feel that you've made strides in in this offseason? Um, just playing the point guard, uh, being able to be the leader on the court, being the coach on the court, uh, doing everything that coach asks me to do. Um, I've made a lot of strides in my ball handling and weight room, shooting, everything that you can name of. Everybody always says, you know, doing what coach asked me to do. What about his message resonates with you? Uh, well, coach is a hard-nosed guy. Uh, he expects a lot of, out of us, especially out of his point guard, because he's got to be the floor general on, on the court. So um, with that being said, just being able to be out there and, you know, put guys where they need to be and kind of deal with adversity and, and do some of those things, is, it's pretty good. 
Um, you got some Australian flair this year. Uh, somebody that was pretty highly uh, touted recruit was William McDowell White, his, he and his brother Daryl. Um, what kind of player is he and uh, what can we expect to see of him? Well, I think both guys, uh, you know, Daryl right now is, is on campus with us and, and we hope to have Will here, here shortly thereafter. But, uh, but both guys bring a wealth of international competition. They've competed against some very good ta talent level. Uh, internationally, uh, they both know how to play, uh, have a good feel for the game. Uh, and I think more importantly, I think uh, William is the type of player that's going to make a lot of guys around him better. He's a very unselfish guy. He's a pass-first guy, and uh, um, he, will, uh, he will make guys around, around him and our team a lot better because of that. They're, I believe, the first players from Australia to come to Fresno State in its history. Um, what made you decide to go out there and, and try to find those kind of guys? Well, you know, our, our women's program had a lot of success with the Australians uh, over the years. And uh, so it's an area that we've always kind of wanted to tap into. And uh, I've got one of my really close friends who coaches in the, in the, in the NBL over there uh, and told me about these kids uh, a number of years ago. And, uh, you know, and again, when you, when you recruit internationally, a lot of times they don't get caught up in some of the things, too, that, that, uh, that uh, American kids get caught up in, you know, what type of school it is, this and that. They just want the best situation. You know, and then we were able to identify those guys early and uh, start recruiting them pretty heavily. And, uh, um, you know, we're excited about having them in our program. How do you feel about um, the blend of all the different classes in this team this year? You know, I think it really helps us. We have a different dynamic in our, in our, in our program than we've ever had. But, but, but guys like Paul Watson and Karachi Ito and, you know, our older players, they've really set the tone for how hard we work. And, you know, we, we, we take a lot of pride in our culture and what it's about and establishing an identity that we're going to play hard every night and compete at a very high level and be a blue-collar team. We're in a blue-collar community, and we like to think that we're a hard-nosed team playing on both ends of the floor. Defensively, what kind of strides do you feel that this, this group is looking to make this year? Um, yeah, I think we could take our defense to a whole new level. Um, like he said, we're, we're very athletic this year, a very long team. Um, very versatile guys can play in many different spots, so I think that will only elevate our defense. And looking at your guys' schedule, you start off at home, but hit a, a road streak of 7 of 10 games pretty early, face three NCAA tournament teams in the non-conference slate. What's your approach looking at those teams? Well, anytime, <clears throat> anytime uh, Coach Jones does a great job with our scheduling, but we really try to put a, a schedule together that's going to be very competitive for us and one that gives us different playing styles that we're going to have to compete against the best in our league with. And uh, we feel like we have one this year where we got to go out in some difficult places. We're at Oregon, uh, one of the top programs in the country. And, uh, um, you know, they bring some length and some versatility that we're going to see similar to like what we'll see with San Diego State. You know, so we like to look at a different opponents that we're going to have to face that are going to be really good in our league. And again, I'm not, everybody in our league is going to be good. I think from top to bottom, there are no nights off in our league. Uh, but, but we put together a non-conference schedule that helps us prepare to try to be successful in our, in our conference slate. And in seeing that you play some NCAA tournament teams, you guys yourselves are one um, now, which is, which is so big. And what was that experience like for you to be in the Pepsi Center and to be a part of, of, of that entire environment? Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was crazy. It was an unbelievable feeling. You know, it was, that was another thing. Um, the coaching staff and you know all the guys we got together and we talked about we wanted to play an NCAA tournament and you know do something that this program hasn't done in uh, in a while so you know it was it was unbelievable feeling being able to you know just be there and bond with the guys and experience what that was all about. Jaron picked fourth in the league this season. Um, how do you feel about that placement? Um, I feel pretty good about it. It's you know it's it's really early right now in the season. We haven't even started yet, but. Um, we just have to bring our A games each and every game. We know uh, it's something they preached last year that I was able to, you know, sit back and kind of uh, watch. So uh, we know have, every every team that we play is going to be an NCAA game. That's what they always say. So uh, we're just going to have to bring it every night. In watching and learning for that year, what are um, what are some feelings you have in in terms of being a leader and in terms of being a difference maker? Well. <clears throat> Sitting back and being able to watch the senior leadership from guys like uh, Juice and Marvell and Caesar, uh, I think I kind of incorporated some of that stuff um, in my play this year and practice so far. So um, learning from them was pretty good for me and helped me uh, learn. Well, we're very excited to see what you guys put out on the court this season. Thanks for taking some time with us on the Mount West Network. Thank you.